My name is Seth Schneider. I'm joined on this call by Neil Gornflow and Millicent Johnson. And on behalf of Shareable, we're uh, so happy you can join us today. Can I turn things over you, to you for a whirlwind tour of Shareable's history? Yeah, sure. And I'm going to keep it short because we're really here to listen to you. Um, so when we launched in October of 2009, well, there really wasn't kind of a sharing community um, to get feedback from. So we um, designed a site uh, amongst our stakeholders that we thought would uh, do the job, and, and it served us well. Uh, we've gone from zero uh, readers to, um, to, to around 40 to 50,000 unique uh, visitors um, a month. Um, we won awards. We've uh, published a book. We've influenced the city of San Francisco. So we've done a lot on a site that, uh, um, that just a few people kind of dreamed up. And I'm really excited about what we can do with the whole global community, um, what we can accomplish together. So I look forward to hearing more about more thoughts from you. Great. Thanks. Um, so as you heard from Neil, uh, we launched almost three years ago, but the website itself hasn't changed significantly during that time. So we've begun this process to redesign the website, and as part of that we're listening to what our community wants. Uh, we want to know how Shareable can better serve you, and we want to know how you think Shareable can better serve the sharing movement. So in short, we're making Shareable more shareable, and we want to create Shareable with you and not just for you. Uh, just a quick uh, review of what we've done so far. We did a reader survey this spring which told us more about our audience and some of the ideas that people have for the website. And then uh, two weeks ago tomorrow, so on July 27th, we held a community event in San Francisco. It was great to hear people's positive energy there and to see how people want to help create Shareable with us. And we also received a lot of great ideas and feedback. Uh, there were three main uh, topic areas that people wanted to focus on uh, it, it, that day in their, in, their com in their discussions. That was the content on the website, so the articles, the videos, and primarily articles that appear on Shareable. Engaging online, so uh, how can people meet and engage with each other on the website, but also face-to-face, -face, offline, and in person, uh, how can they engage with each other? And finally, some other website improvements. Uh, so things like changes to the home page or making the site work better was another, was a third topic area. So I'd like to find out, um, oops, we lost our poll there, one second. All right, we'd like to find out what people are most wanting to, to discuss today. We're going to probably be able to cover all of them, but we'll depending on which one people are most interested in, you can click on your screen here. Sorry, Sean. Um, but for those of you on the call, uh, click to see, to let us know which one you're most interested in talking about, and we'll start with that one. And for those of you that have already uh, voted, you'll see the results. And I'll just give it another moment here. We've got eight people have voted so far. Uh, so, it's looking like the the face to face has the most energy. I'm sorry, the engaging online and face to face has the most energy. So we'll start with that one, and then website content has the has the next most number of votes. Uh, so there were there are eight people voting for engaging online and face to face, and two people voting for website content. So we'll like I said, we'll try to cover all three of them. So uh, for the rest of the meeting, uh, we'll go through those three. We'll try to divide it up. Uh, and leave time for all. And then I'm expecting since today's call is larger than the one we did two days ago that we may have time to hear everyone's ideas. And so we do have a way to receive more feedback afterwards. So if you have an idea or um, some feedback and you're not able to do it, please just make a note and um, we'd love to hear that afterwards if we don't have a chance to hear it uh, during today's call. So let's start off with the topic of engaging online and face-to-face. -face. And I'll turn it over to Millicent to just give a recap of some of the key points that we heard on this topic at the San Francisco event. And then we'll hear from all of you on the call today your thoughts. Great. So um, when we had the gathering in San Francisco, um, 
people's energy mirrored the energy that it seems like is on the call today. Um, people are really interested in how best to use a platform to unga- engage both online and face-to-face. Um, some basic ideas that came from the group was one, um, figuring out uh, what events are happening in your community and being able to connect to those events so that you can connect to the community. So people had the idea of having an event listing on Shareable so that no matter where you are, you can connect to the community and events that are um, affiliated or aligned with uh, Shareable and the sharing economy. Um, the second idea was having more community-driven events. So events that um, shareable co-host with community members. And that could be everything from a national share day to a monthly um, share gathering that happens um, to having folks do events in their communities in which people actually get to practice some form of the sharing economy. Um, so there could be an event that's around gift circles, for instance, um, or around bartering, for instance. Um, The third idea that came up was that people really wanted to be connected professionally and figure out who else they were connected to. So there was this idea for a LinkedIn for the sharing economy um, in which you could see what people are working on, what your connections are to folks, and then connect to them that way. And finally, uh, there was the thought that there should be more calls to action for the community. And this meant everything from Uh, legislative calls to action, figuring out um, what folks should rally behind and support, um, and education around that, to asking folks to try out a service um, like car sharing and then write about it um, and share their experience with the community. So those are four of the top ideas that came out of that group. And now we're really excited to hear how you guys would want to use the platform to engage online and face-to-face. Thank you, Millicent. Uh, Before we open it up for all of you, just a couple of quick points. Our facilitator at the event in San Francisco, his belief, Alan Gunn, uh, is that it's really important to stay, when we're doing this, to stay in the, as he puts it, in the problem space and not in the solution space. Mm -hmm. So what I mean by that is if you can let us know the problem you're facing or the need for why you want the site to do something, that's really helpful. Um, you know, it can be helpful to hear the ideas of how to solve it, but it's, it's um, you know, we, we don't want to get into the, no, we should have the widget higher up on the page or lower down on the page. That kind of detail of how exactly to design it is, isn't as helpful at this point. So that's one point. And then also, you know, please be frank with us. You can be blunt. Um, it's okay if you're critical of things and you're not going to hurt our feelings today. So we'd love to hear from you. Uh, what's, what do you think of these ideas? What um, is appealing or what other ideas um, uh, do you have? And I'll open it up. Seth, this is Kevin Bayuk. Kevin? Uh, I think the uh, using networks to uh, connect people um, in terms of staying in the problem space, the uh, burgeoning uh, initiatives and in sharing I've seen have, in my observation, been mostly held back by uh, lack of trust. Um, which can be an inhibitor from people attempting to uh, engage with some of the sharing modalities um, in the new sharing economy. And Shareable as an exponent of the sharing economy could play a role in helping to build trust, whether that's in the development of a network or enabling networks to establish trust better. Um, um, I'm not sure exactly how to do that. but. The using networks to connect people. I'll, I'll throw in some uh, weight to that idea. Great, thanks. I saw Erica raising her hand. So, did you want to go ahead? Well, I think actually my comment. I'm just going to chat it instead. Okay, sure. Well, okay. Since since uh, we're in a in a little quiet 
quiet spell, then I'll just say it out. I wasn't sure if this was the kind of thing you were looking for or not, but I just um, the 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 list of uh, suggestions that came up, I, three of them sounded actually really really great to me. And then the one I just wasn't sure about was um, sponsoring events seemed potentially a little off mission for shareable because I see it more as this resource clearinghouse connecting. It's global, and so to start trying to actually hold you know, live events seems maybe more in the purview of a lot of the organizations and people who you're working with, but maybe not shareable itself. It might just be a little off mission. And just to clarify, do you mean both if shareable was to organize the events, and do you also mean that if, sh if uh, other community members were to organize them and then shareable was to help promote those? Do you see no, that as also often listing, often events, listing events is, seems totally appropriate. Um, okay. Because it's kind of like you guys are like the newspaper of record for the, the sharing community. So yeah, sharing events, you should be able to find out what's, what's going on in your area. But, um, but yeah, but actually sponsoring the event, you might spread yourself a little thin, I think, trying to take that on. Yeah. Okay, thanks for the clarification. Kevin uh, Jones, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, I, I'm thinking that you know events that convene the people who are doing this might be really where they figure out how they do it or how they could do it together. Or you know, I mean, right now shareable is a thing you read or you watch, but it, 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 it seems like you know something like meetups could be community building. So. Yeah. yeah. Is that Cristobal? Did you, were you going to add something? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Would, would, did you want to add something there? Did I hear you? Yeah. Uh, I'm a little bit lost, to be honest, because I'm in the middle of uh, co-working. But what I I have some ideas because yesterday I was reading all the feedbacks that you have in the shareable article that from the meeting in on July. And what I what I really think is uh, it's very important to to build this strong all offline community. And and for this, I think I don't know how to explain because one second. But I think we need to build strong relationship between the sharing advocates, like people that they are the readers or the the editors and people who is in the community. And uh, with this uh, driving events, they, they need to be really, really attractive. So others, when they, they see that there is a shareable meeting, they really want to join. So I don't know the way to do it, but we need to find some dynamics that they are very attractive. And then uh, for sure, having an event listing on the on the site is very important. So you can join every city. You can see the where the event is going to happen and all this. And I think also another feedback is the the sharing map that can be really helpful because if you can see in a map where are all the sharing economy people and organizations and all this and events for sure, then you can you can join. So I think this sharing map. But I don't remember who who said in the in the meeting, but I think that's really important. Yeah, the sharing map was an idea that came up on, in the comments on that article. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Sharon Edie from Australia uh, had that suggestion. Yeah, I think that that can be really really powerful. And that would help with connecting. Is it? Do you see that as being for people who? Are new to the space, or for people who are already in that space? I think already, because from my experience in the last three years, I was pretty alone. I I had some philosophy of living. I, I was just researching information and everything, but I, I I didn't know many people. And then nowadays, in this year, I I I can see many many projects, and I think we should find some way of of all the people we are sharing this uh, philosophy or these ideas or this movement, we should have 
some connection, but really strong. Great, thank you. When, thank you. Yeah, uh, I see. Uh, Kevin Jones raised his hand again. Uh, okay, and I also see Jesse after that. So why don't we go to Kevin jo Kevin Jones? Uh, no, I didn't. That was just okay. the one. Okay, Jesse, would you like to go ahead? Jesse, did you did you want to say something? Yeah, now we hear you. Yep. Okay, great. Sorry, I was on mute. Um, so uh, Crystal Ball brings up a, a point that I, I brought up in the in the last call that I wanted to sort of get people's thoughts on during this call as well. The point of um, are people having difficulty uh, sort of discovering other sharing companies and should shareable uh, take a role in sort of exposing or, or acting as a, like you guys maybe said earlier, a clearinghouse for where you can find um, companies, you know, um, or people, you know, that you want to connect with in a given city or something like that. That's, that's the problem. I guess I was trying to stay in the problem space rather than offer yeah. a solution. Um, so the problem is being uh, connecting. Um, I know that a lot of people are very busy, and so it's tough to it's tough sometimes to connect from far away if you're not able to attend events in person. Uh, yes, I, this is Ashley. I would definitely like to know how to connect remotely. I'll be heading back to the East Coast, and whether there's communities over there to tap into, or whether there's ways to continue forms like this, like teleconferencing in or videotaping uh, events that happen, being able to watch them online, that would be wonderful. And just being aware of, of events as they occur would also be helpful. I saw that Kate wanted to say something, but um, also if anyone else had a response uh, to Jesse's question. My response uh, Kate, is not in re to re or I wasn't going to respond in to Jesse. It was another topic. This is Kate. Sure, go for it. Okay. Um, so one idea that I'm not sure who said it, but in terms of having events, perhaps Shareable could develop some sort of framework that's scalable so there can be people in different communities and uh, who are interested in sharing to have a template of how to run an event or, or a sharing event or how to connect with people and have some sort of roadmap that um, shareable puts together and be like, oh, and here on this day, let's have every like, let's tap into the different communities, and here's a framework to use if you want to host your own sharing event. Great, thanks. Um, I saw a couple of hands, so I'll go to Danielle next. Hi, yeah, and no, I just wanted to agree with all of sort of the former comments about being able to tap into this community. Um, if you're remote, I'm in Texas and. Um, being able to either tap into resources that you guys have of how to hold events and how to get people involved would be amazing. Um, also, just being able to look at um, look at resources with other people maybe that are interested on your website, and so getting people together um, and to look at videos. That's something I hadn't really thought of, and I'm not sure if that's exactly what the previous speaker was talking about, but that's what sort of popped into my head. Um, so both of those things are ways that I think you guys could. Definitely engage people, but yeah, the problem is um, for me, it's definitely being able to um, to meet other people and uh, not not sure how to go about doing it, and not sure um, where to look to meet other people doing this already, and where to point people. And I usually point people to Shareable, but it's been just a few days since I've discovered it, I guess. So. <laughs> oh, that's actually really good to hear. Uh, I saw Cristobal and then uh, Kevin Jones. Cristobal, did you? Cristobal, yes. did you want to? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, according to what you are saying, it's true that people, is, uh, especially I think in the States, you are very busy, and to, to go to an event, it must be something different. And because there are many events like Meetup or whatever, so we need to find some way of doing something really, really different. And maybe uh, taking pictures, making videos, something that people can see that is really, we are building an attractive community and we are having fun also. 
because uh, yeah, I don't know. the problem is how to find the the dynamics. And this is something today I was with Antonin from WeShare. He is in Barcelona, and we were talking about the same. Is I think this is very important how to to manage these events so we can uh, they are attractive to the people. And yeah, we need to. I think we need to spend time in, on this. Mm. Yeah, keeping it fun. Yeah, thank you. And uh, let's see. I had Kevin Jones and then Erica next. Yeah, I was wondering uh, what we we know about the readers of Shareable. Are they people who believe in the movement, or are they people creating shareable businesses, or where where's the real activity? And and but I'm, I'm hearing lots of people say that they want to know where it's happening if they're remote. And I'm just wanting to know what, what we know from surveys or anything about, about how people are using the site and who they are. Uh, um, I've been talking a lot. Could I put Neil on the spot to give an answer to that? Are you on the call? Are you muted? Yeah. Um, uh, actually, I have to. <laughs> I have to go get my child. Uh, so okay, <laughs> I could take a stab at that one. Yeah, yeah so a large ch chunk of our readership is uh, global. I want to say it's maybe 30 to 40 percent outside the United States. We are, you know, we we took a, a survey. Uh, reader the re reader survey showed that um, over 50 percent. Um, you know, in the 50% range, had tried lots of different kinds of types of sharing, uh, whether that was car sharing or um, exchanging things, bartering, and so forth. Um, and then, uh, you know, the the my thinking is that a, a it's a pretty small percentage of people who are kind of the entrepreneurs or the really diehard sharers, and that they're never going to be a large percentage of our site. But um, uh, oh, and we also do have a, about I think it's either around 40% of our uh, traffic I believe is uh, new new visitors. Uh, sorry, is returning visitors, and the rest are new visitors. So we get a lot of new visitors every month. So presumably those are people who are first finding out about shareable or sharing. So that's. Uh, Hopefully, some answer to your question. Um, let's see. I had, uh, yeah. Do you want to respond to that? Sure. I just want, I wanted to ask a, a follow-up question. Um, so, being the part of the small percentage of the like diehard sharer entrepreneur category, uh, what do most people do on the site? Is it they're they're just reading an article because they found it via. If they saw some article in USA Today and said, oh, what's the sharing economy? They looked at the sharing economy and Shareable came up. Um, and they read an article and then sort of forget about it? Or, I mean, what is the, do you know, like, sort of what the 98% of the, of the readers are, are doing? You know, I don't have a lot of good knowledge about that. I know um, that, you know, there are, there are certainly there's certainly a good chunk that you know read that one article and and then go on to something else. Um, I don't have deep knowledge in in that, in that analytics space, so I, I can't answer that question too well. Um, let me move on to a couple more before we run out of time on this topic. Uh, a couple more people. Um, so Erica, and then uh, I go back uh, to Cristobal as well. Yeah, um, so one of the ideas we hadn't talked about yet was the you know, sort of beefing up your LinkedIn presence. And I think that could be really valuable. The problem from my perspective with LinkedIn is there are so many potential groups that I could become members of, you know, sustainable professionals, green this, green that. There's a million groups and and none of them is actually <laughs> all that great. And so it's like, oh, I don't really want to spend my time. You know, it can become this, this black hole of, of wasted time or, or so it feels on LinkedIn. But if there were, you know, a LinkedIn group that was like very specifically like professionals, um, people who work for sharing economy businesses or, or something very specific um, and, the, and the, you know, you, you knew it was really a place where you could post stuff and, and get, you know, really good feedback from professionals, um, then, you know, that could become 
I think that could become valuable. But but the big caveat is that I think people are already feeling really overextended on on LinkedIn. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, before I call on Christabel, I just wanted to see if Sean was still on the call and if he was patiently waiting or maybe, I'm not sure if he's still on. Okay. Uh, so Christabel, would you like to go ahead? I just wanted to make sure we reach out to people Sorry, better. Hi, it's Sean here. Oh, hi, Sean. Yeah. Sorry, I just had you on mute while I was driving. I had to fiddle here. Uh, okay, yeah, sir. still on the call. Uh, I guess, anything you wanted to add? Uh, just kind of uh, agree with the, the various groups. You know, up here in Canada, we're having difficulty connecting with, uh, you know, the right people, people of the same mindset. So that would be, you know, my number one with a bullet in terms of priorities. The uh, the map, I'd be very interested to see as well. Um, so yeah, I, I think I would just echo the uh, the sentiments of the others. Okay. Thanks, Sean. And then uh, um, Cristobal had his hand raised as well. I have a few ideas about the face-to-face, -face, face in engaging. I think uh, I've seen Alpha Law uh, talk about this, uh, about creating gift circles. Maybe this, uh, this, can, this can be good for, for the creating the, the strong offline community. And also maybe for online, maybe collaborating with GitFlow or ShareTribe or I don't know, some way or some tool that is inside the shareable platform so the, the shareable users, they can share uh, with others. So maybe, maybe this can be another a good idea. Mm. And, and another thing I think uh, creating videos is, is a very good way to explain. So, yeah, I don't know, es explaining what is going on about the sharing economy and maybe some examples of people that they are really sharing in the neighborhood and, or explaining what is their shareable dream or real life experiences. All these. I think videos are very important because in the shareable, now they are the articles. But I think if we can implement videos and also, as I, I told before, the share map and then with the event, events, so that can be better. Thank you so okay. much. Uh, you. So I, I'm actually, like I said before, you know, we, we don't have time to get to all the ideas that people have, um, and we want to respect people's time for taking an hour, an hour out of your day. So I do want to move us on to the next topic, but there will be a way to give feedback uh, once this call ends. So uh, let's move on to uh, website improvements. So what, this, what came up uh, at, at the San Francisco event in that regard was improvements to the home page. So some things that people were saying a couple times was uh, decluttering the home page, I think making it cleaner, um, less, maybe less stuff on the home page. Uh, for mobile devices, meaning cell phones, mobile phones, and t tablets, uh, making shareable easier to use and to read on those devices. And then the idea with job listings that someone suggested at the San Francisco event was having listings from sharing friendly companies, sharing friendly organizations, and also from cooperatives. So I want to open it up and hear what ideas people have for website improvements. Um, what are some of the problems you're facing or what other ideas uh, do you have? And also, what do you think of, of these? Are these? Would these be useful? Uh, go ahead, Erica. Um, yeah, I, I love the job listings idea. Um, and I agree about decluttering and part of that. And just to be like brutally honest here, um, Great. The, about the, community, the community blogs, um, they're not very good, and and I know you want to have a space for it, and you know, but uh, maybe not on the home page, and and maybe filtering a little bit more, because um, some of them are really not that relevant. Some of them are really silly, um, and it kind of it dra even though it is community blog, and you know, you can recognize that it sort of just drags down the overall quality of the shareable site. Having some of those posts up there. Thank you. Yeah. 
Uh, let's see. I, I think I saw Cristobal's hand again. Yes, I uh, yesterday I was registering in the site, and uh, I know Drupal because I I was learning Drupal to do the the project that I am doing, and I I saw some mis the errors, uh, mistakes, and like these red screens and all this, and I I I can see that there is a lot of work for improving the site. Well, I, I'm not I'm not sure what how many people are working in the site and if you have designers and programmers and all this. But uh, I can see, well, a little bit that there is a lot of uh, work. And not only about the user interface, I think also about the maybe the core and everything. But uh, yeah, I have to check more the site to give a proper feedback, but just for one day of using it. I can see that, yeah, there are things to to improve. Thank you. Yeah. So, for those that aren't familiar with that term, Drupal is the it's a content management system. It's the it's the guts of what runs our website. Uh, Erica, did you have a question? No. Were your hand raised? Uh, no. Oh, no, I was popping up saying that. Any other thoughts here? Um, anyone? Maybe I can ask the question in the reverse, which is what is working really well about the website for you right now? Danielle, did you want to go ahead? Uh, um, so I really like the, I don't know what you call it, um, it's sort of the uh, almost like a slideshow preview thing at the top of the newer articles it seems like. And um, to me that helps just because I know what, what's really fresh on the website when I go visit it. And that's one of the reasons I actually keep coming back to the website um, specifically is just because there's always good content. Um, and I'd be curious to know which community tag um, the, the person speaking to uh, the person speaking on this before was talking about because there's trust and community and then communities down further at the bottom. Um, just oh, yeah, I can clarify that the, the community blog is on, on the very right side of the page if you scroll oh, okay. part way down. That's the community blog section. There. Okay. That, that helps to understand that. Yeah. yeah, no, I can see what you're saying. Uh, Kate, did you want to go ahead? Yeah, I really like I like the content on the uh, overall content and the articles, uh, and I like the headings. Uh, I think that they are like I'm happy I'm happy with the articles that are on there, and I feel like I learn a lot when I go to the site and I and I read what's going on. Thanks, Kate. Yeah, thank you. Uh, any any last thoughts on website improvements before we we move on? Actually, th we're actually segueing a little bit into into some of that, which is the website content. Why don't I um, actually go ahead to that next slide, and uh, we can open this part up. And if there are other ideas people have about either the improvements to the site or the website content, we can cover we can cover both. Uh, I think Neil is. Um, Busy at the moment, yeah. so I can yeah. address this. Yeah, just. Are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, thanks, Seth. Uh, oh, sure. So on on the web, so just a quick comments on what people had to say in San Francisco about uh, content. So they really wanted to hear more on on people um, and how they share, like how they integrate sharing into their everyday lives and in their communities. So examples um, seem to be really powerful and connect with people well. Um, also, not to be afraid of controversy and um, really open up discussions about uh, important issues in the sharing economy. Uh, and then, um, which we already touched on a little bit here, is consider new users and returning users. And I caught a little bit of that, that discussion. And we, yeah, about 60% of our um, visitors each month are, 
our new users. So it's a big chunk of who we uh, reach out to. Um, and these two groups, returning users and new users, have have different needs. So um, we need to consider that in our redesign, how to handle those two uh, two different needs. Thanks. So uh, let's open it up. If there were still any other comments that people had on website improvements, feel free to mention those. But otherwise, how about the how about the content on the site? Maybe I'll pick someone and put them on the spot. Um, Kevin Bike, are you there? Do you have any thoughts about what is working? Well, or could be improved for content on the site for you or for the sharing movement. Um, well, uh, one thing that uh, I think could be somehow brought to above the fold is in your about us. Uh, you have uh, uh, you know want to share, want to get involved, want to know more about sharing. Which you know those questions kind of provide a very a fairly comprehensive introduction to sharing. Um, when considered in total, and somehow if there was kind of a <laughs> bringing that to the front, so that if somebody is new to sharing, <laughs> new to the sharing economy, maybe they caught a headline in USA Today or whatever about the sharing economy, and they ended up here. Um, highlight kind of uh, you know, are you new to the sharing economy? Start here, and uh, making that very obvious and giving some kind of uh, easy to follow steps. Uh, I might advocate for something like that. Great, right, thank you. Let's see. I see Erica's hand, and then Cristobal, and then Danielle. So let's go to Erica next. Yeah, um, focusing on people and how they share, but also how about focusing on um, sharing startups at various stages, very new and and more established. I would love to see just profiles of you know really cool. Sharing businesses and what what their ideas are and how they're how they're launching it and how they're doing and um, I think it just could be a great way to get um, the sharing community knowing about and giving early kind of early critical support to some of these uh, some of these sharing startups. Great, thank you. Uh, let's see, Cristobal, would you like to go next? I agree with Erica about uh, more information about. What's going on in, in business in the sharing economy, and because I I think it's very important to to see the benefits also in the in a personal way, but also in the in a in the company way, and also I think uh, going back to the new users, maybe having some video. Maybe I repeat my my ideas, but I I think it's important that for example, SkillShare they have a really one two very good videos and then you can see from in one minute and a half two minutes you can see their ideas so I think it's very it can be a good idea to have a video very good video uh, host that explains what is the sharing economy this for the new user okay thank you uh, Cristobal and then you all had seen your hand go up did you have something you wanted to say Was that uh, Neil or Danielle? Danielle. Okay. Um, yeah, so just about sort of introducing people to the site, and this is sort of straying a little bit into the solution space, so stop me if I get too far there. It's uh, okay to go a little bit there, no problem. <laughs> okay, no, I just want to make sure. Um, a lot of sites have sort of an introduction kind of screen where if you've never been to the site before or if you're not logged in, that's what you see. And so I think that that might help um, sort of to create a gateway for people into the site, and it might really help to have you know the introduction to what is sharing, how can you share kind of a thing there. And then once you create a profile and log in, then you can kind of access a lot of the more in-depth information as far as the articles and everything, because I think that for some people coming to the home page might be a little bit overwhelming because you know people are saying it's a little bit cluttered and things like that. And if you're not really into sharing right now, um, you do have to dig a little bit deeper to find out what it is and how people can plug in. Um, so creating that gateway might be really, really important. Um, and then also I completely, completely agree with um, sharing more business profiles. I think that would be very good information to have. Um, 
just myself as a uh, dreamer and wanting to be an entrepreneur at some point, I would love to know how I can um, sort of be a part of this economy with, with whatever business I do start. So. Great. Thank you. So I'm going to go next to Kevin Jones, then Kevin Bayek, and then Jesse. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe this is solution space, and I'm not supposed to say it, but I mean, I was wondering if you could look at, you know, Kickstarter or Indiegogo and see if sharing or collaborative consumption is a tag there and somehow use them as a feed to go to the, the, those startups or projects that are that sit there as just, you know, a, an easy way to add content and maybe help people take action or just some link to the to that crowdfunding, linking share, sharing the crowdfunding in some kind of way. Okay, thank you. So bringing some of those projects that are related to the space into the site is that the idea? Yeah, right. And and just you know, and and then they are generating some of that content you know for you uh, by their project, and it's just you know you could be a you know, a, a filter aggregator for, for those sorts of projects across the, the crowdfunding site, just linking sharing and crowdfunding in some kind of way. Okay, thanks. Uh, Kevin Bayou, next? Yeah, um, I'm not sure if this is solution space uh, or, or problem space, but uh, as an analog that I would advocate for looking at both for the events that they produce but also for the way they organize their online magazine would be Make Magazine. Um, uh, both for content and in terms of how they, the site is uh, very clumsy. I think Make Magazine site. If I had to critique it a bit, but the way they have kit reviews, which could be you know share sharing application reviews or business reviews, and then they also feature makers. Um, the idea of featuring sharers or telling more personal stories about people um, that could be inspiring, and then. The the way they've organized their site, I think, would be a, if you haven't already, I would advocate for using that as an analog of a direction. And certainly, they have success in their bringing online uh, online to on life events um, and monetizing those as well. And by the on life events, you mean their in person, like their their maker fairs, right? Their fairs, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Um, Jesse, would you did you have something to add? I did. Um, I would like to see more uh, content on the economic benefits of sh um, I think that a lot of people who are new to the site are probably, I mean, I would guess that they're thinking, you know, sharing, okay, why am I in first grade again? And if we make it, um, if there were more content specifically about, like, the, the financial aspects of it, um, or, I mean, even, the, you know, even part of it being green, um, just sort of, uh, diversifying how the, the really tangible uh, benefits that you know 75% of people want to see before they feel the, the good feeling inside. You know, um, that's that's one of the things that I would like to see more in content. Great, thank you. Uh, let me check in and see if uh, again if Sean, who's um, Muting himself, wanted to jump in at all, and uh, hopefully I'm not causing a car accident in the process of asking him to fiddle with his phone. Uh, let's see. Uh, anyone else uh, that wanted to add something either in the website content or or in any of the areas that we've we've touched on this morning or today? This is Kevin Bayou. Um, I think the, pro the problem statement or the, the feedback you got in the San Francisco event about consideration of returning users is a potent one. And I think somebody called out earlier the idea of a map or calls to action for interaction uh, with the sharing community and, and leveraging network. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think that's a potent opportunity. Uh, somewhere in there to engage with returning users who aren't just looking for the new story, but for other needs that could be met. Yeah, deeper ways to go deeper.
Anyone else wanting to add anything here? As a last last call, Cristobal, would you like to go ahead? Yes, I would like to talk about the one last idea, and I, I think uh, in the we are working a, a way that is is a new way. So it's really hard to find, well, at least from my point of view and my experiences, for this kind of project like Shareable or others that we are in the sharing economy. Sometimes it's hard to find what is the next step because it's a new way. So I think uh, we need to find some way to collaborate with other projects, like all the projects that we are, we share the values. We, we should find a way to collaborate. And I think if we put energy together and we create synergy, so maybe we can find what is the next step. So um, yes, this, I wanted to share this because I think it's very important to, to do a better uh, site to, to have a better tools to offer the society. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, unless there are any last ones, I'm going to start wrapping up here. Any last thoughts? Well, uh, if there is other feedback that occurs to you, uh, or if, if it was a little bit hard to jump in given the number of people on the call, we'd love to have your additional thoughts or ideas or criticisms and critiques. Uh, there's going to be a survey that pops up on your screen in, in just a moment. You can fill that out. Uh, you can also send me any feedback you'd like by email. I'd welcome that. And we will be posting this video and a, a synopsis of some of the comments we heard today on the website. should be early next week. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time to put it together. So if you want to share any comments there as well, things you want to amplify, things you agree with or disagree with, we welcome well, we welcome your feedback. So I want to just thank all, everyone here for taking the time uh, to uh, to give us feedback on how we can do a better job, both to serve you, to serve uh, the sharing movement better, and how we can uh, work together to 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 accomplish all this. So thank you, everyone. I uh, really appreciate that.